military force, no, not on necessarily a country, but get ready for this, shocker of all shockers, the invasion of communism in the church. Wow. How did that happen? How is it that a great Russian communist leader, not three, maybe four decades ago, said, we will conquer America without ever firing one bullet? How could this devastating regime or worldview governmental regulatory system of communism come into the Church of the Living God? We're going to find out today. We're going to talk to Ryan Helfenbein with the Standing for Freedom Center on the campus of Liberty University. We're going to talk about what it means to be woke, the wokeism of the church today. What about CRT, critical race theory? Did you know there's there are very few things more racist and communistic than CRT? Forcing an agenda that actually causes different races to hate each other. That's what's happening. The invasion of communism, but is it happening in the church? And what can we do about it? Have you seen it in your church? What about Black Lives Matter? What a brilliant group of Marxist and communists got together and said, how can we generate some racial hatred in the culture? We'll, make, we'll take a true statement with an underlying Marxist agenda. Well, the true statement is Black Lives Matter. Of course Black Lives Matter. But the people that started that, the movement, quote-unquote movement of Black Lives Matter, has some very evil, communistic, racist people that that have multiple mansions all over the country. They're getting rich off race baiting. And that has invaded the church, where churches are more concerned about getting races to like each other than getting grace and the gospel to people to bring them to Christ. Only the gospel can get people to, to like each other. I got, look, I got kids, okay? My kids, my kids look at each other sometimes and say, I hate you. They're fighting. They're the same race, the same family, the same bloodline, in the same home, and they don't even get along. Apart from the grace of God. The champion of the grace of God is the church of the living God, his living organism on this planet. Upon this rock I'll build my church, the gates of hell will not withstand against this. Matthew chapter 16. Yet how is the church now starting to embrace communism, socialism, CRT? These, these agendas that are very, very much against the Word of God. This is Stu Epperson. Dr. Michael Brown will be back with you, God willing, soon, next couple of days. He is recovering, getting a lot better. He gives his love. He is grateful for all your prayers, and we are grateful for him. This is the line of fire. I'm honored to be sitting in the hot seat, and I'm honored to be talking to my buddy, Ryan Helfenbein. He couldn't have called in at a better time. Ryan, you're on the line of fire. And you are with the Standing for Freedom Center, Liberty University. God bless you, my brother. Hey, bro. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for for having me on, Stu. Really appreciate it. I appreciate Dr. Michael Brown as well. And uh, just honored to be here and talking with you today. Well, we were with Mike Pompeo and we were with Huckabee and a bunch of other big time believers at one of your conferences not even a month ago packed out we're so grateful you guys you know advertised that on on the truth network and all of our affiliates and we promoted it and you couldn't even hardly get the room ryan it was it was but there there's a there is a an appetite a hunger among god's people to hear the truth about these alien anti-god invasions of communism and socialism and this sexual confusion that's being lumped in that is literally attacking the very foundation of the church in america Ryan, t- talk to our listeners about, well, well, first of all, tell everyone what is Standing for Freedom Center, for those that maybe are just meeting you for the first time, and, and tell us about the, the battle that we are in. If we, we need to kind of open our eyes, get the ostrich's head out of the sand, as it were. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I think this is, I, I always want to position it this way. This is the greatest challenge I think we've ever faced as Americans. So if you're living in America, this is probably the greatest cultural challenge you've ever faced. It's not just the greatest challenge of our lifetime. It's the greatest challenge that we've experienced in the history of this country. 
Uh, we, we're at a fever pitch. And I, 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 I will go back to it's amazing the things that, that were overcome, right? The civil rights movement, uh, the, the, the war to end slavery. We think about the Revolutionary War. But we're not debating any longer along lines uh, where, where we're debating like the god of reality. This is a postmodern era where we're debating reality itself. It's not just it's not just socialism, communism, in terms of the the old way of looking at it. Uh, Karl Marx, Frederick Engels, right? It's instead it it, it, it amalgamation in in, in, in postmodernism is Michel Foucault, Herbert Marcuse, uh, Derek Bell, right? Uh, Kimberly Crenshaw. Uh, it's the critical theorist. It's deconstruction. It, it's postmodernity using language to confuse everything. And it's on steroids because it, they control media and social media. There, this mass information overload. Everywhere people go to get news and information, not just Google, but on Instagram, on TikTok, everywhere you look, uh, people are being discipled according to the dictates of the spirit of the age, which is anti-Christic in its messaging. Um, it's anti-God, but it's anti-reality. Um, and so what's crazy is there's no longer male nor female. There's not just 37 genders do there's like millions of genders right gender fluidity right the gender no longer- the gender uh, variety now is mind-boggling it's kind of whatever you feel if you feel like a unicorn you're a unicorn and that's if i right. say you're not a unicorn i've just committed hate speech that's right I mean, that's in the bill that by the way yeah. you don't think any of this matters you don't think voting matters you don't think getting involved matters the senate's been sitting on a bill called hr 55 and that bill says if you say homosexuality is a sin Right. If you give Dr. Brown's book, he wrote a book called A Queer Thing Happened to America. It's academically rich. It's got quotes and cites. Right. It's scientifically strong on the genders, how you're not born that way. Nurture versus nature. It's a very good book. It's a it's a powerful polemic on the truth of biblical sexuality, but written at the academic scholarly level. If I give that book to someone, A Queer Thing Happened to America, I have literally committed a hate crime against them according to Senate Bill H.R. 55. Ryan, am I wrong on that? No, you're not wrong. That, that, those are the kinds of things that are coming down. Absolutely. The law is going so, to enforce this. What will you and I say, oh, that'll never happen. And your pastor is like, well, that no, we just need to kind of love and this and that. Your law, The law is going to force him to marry two homosexuals in his church. That's, that's going to be exactly the law. Right. Or, or you can go to jail. Or that's worse, right. right, Ryan? That's exactly right. So the, the reality that we're facing is, Schools being prepared to shut down, churches being prepared to shut down, or go to jail, right? Righteous resistance is going to be hard for this generation. And when I say this is the biggest challenge for Americans, let's be real. Let's be real with each other. Persecution goes along all around the world 24-7. More people are dying for the gospel, for the faith today around the world than ever before. Yeah, a lot of martyrs, so, a lot of the persecuted churches at large is, is going on all over. In fact, We've got it made in America. I mean, we might get laughed at, and there might be some political fall fallout and this and that. But literally, they will kill you just for owning a Bible. And That's is, right. is you know, there are thirty five countries to date. Are, it's illegal to own a Bible, and close to half of those countries, you will be executed or put in prison for having a Bible in your hands. So we we think that we we've got a tough here. But Ryan. You guys right there amid the darkness, standing tall for freedom is the Standing for Freedom Center in Lynchburg, Virginia. On the campus of Liberty University, you all tell us a little bit about, you know, kind of what are the, the main axioms of your organization? And by the way, we're so grateful that you are there. We, well, so we basically exist to defend life, liberty, and truth to ensure the foundations of freedom exist for the next generation. So life, I mean, that that starts with pro-life, a pro-life message, a pro-life movement. You right? were just we in D.C. You were just in D.C. a couple days that, ago celebrating. That, yeah, we were we were there at the beginning of December for the Dobbs case prayer rally. Had a thousand yes. students wow. there. My daughter it's went up there. Time. My daughter and a bunch yeah. of Liberty students packed on those buses and drove up to pray for the Supreme Court that we would stop killing our young in America, a country that is That's killing right. our young. 
You know, I, Ryan, I was staggered by the number one killer of human beings in 2021. It's like, I think it was like 47 million were dead at the hands of abortion in 2021. It's insane. And it continues to go. Uh, it continues to go. So, yeah, we, we were there. Uh, we had the president of Liberty University there. We had the head of our new dean of the, of the Liberty Law School, Morse Tan. Uh, we had uh, uh, Robert Hurd over the School of Government. We, our academics are involved. I mean, there was leadership all over the place, and Liberty was well represented awesome. there. And we're we're praying that this is the last March for Life in which Roe v. Wade is the law of the land. We're wow. praying that this is the last year where that's true. That would be awesome. Um, but but we also the the Standing Freedom Center exists for liberty, religious liberty, freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, uh, uh, Stu, cognitive liberties. You talk about Dr. Michael Brown's book, the ability to have free thought, the, the yeah. ability to disagree, the ability to say what is true and what is necessary, yeah. what is right, and to not be censored or worse, right. to be jailed, fined, constricted in some way, have your business shut down, your church shut yeah. down. So we exist for liberty. And then, of course, the truth itself, which is which begins with the gospel of Jesus Christ, the God's word. We stand on that, right? Amen. I think about uh, Martin Luther, the great, great classic reformer. Here I stand. I can do another. God help me. Uh, we need to have a courageous generation that's willing to be bold and courageous, and it starts with the word of God. So uh, that's what we exist for. We're, tr- we're we're inspiring a new generation. We're reaching a new generation, and it is beco- it is a challenge. It's a real challenge. Okay, and that's the voice of Ryan Heffelbein. He's on the air with us for the next fifteen minutes, and then we got a fascinating guest taking us to the end of the show. I'm Stu Epperson in for Dr. Michael Brown. This is the Line of Fire Radio Show, coast to coast, all over the world, by way of the internet, TruthNetwork.com. Download the free Truth Network app. Your phone will become a radio immediately. Ryan, when we come back from the break, which we have, we have a break creeping up on us. Will you talk to us about what is wokeness and how has communism, how is it trying to invade the church of the living God in America? So, Ryan, when we come back, help us with that, will you, my friend? Absolutely. Awesome. 866-34-TRUTH if you want to grab a line and jump in the line of fire. Saving at the Home Depot means you can do more for less. Like making your laundry and life easier with an LG wash tower that automatically detects fabric texture and load size. Enjoy savings on top-rated appliances online, in-store, or on the Home Depot app. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. U.S. only, while supplies last. Valid 1-6 through 1-26, 2022. Free delivery applies to orders of $396 or more. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. The Truth Network would like to say muchas gracias to our amigos at Pancho Villa's Mexican Restaurant for being awesome partners. Pancho Villa's serving all of Mexico's best platters. Stop by and bring the whole family for a cultural experience that's not only delicious, but also authentic. My daughter Joy loves the ACP and the cheese dip. Me encanta la ACP y el queso. Make it a Mexican night at Pancho Villa's, the best Mexican food in the triad. Winston-Salem and High Point. MyPanchoVillas.com. H2O, doctors handy and handy, orthodontic specialists, the gold standard of orthodontic care in the triad, the Winston-Salem Journal, and Triad Moms on Main, best orthodontist year after year, the only Invisalign certified diamond orthodontist in the area. Doctors handy and handy, mission is to create beautiful smiles and to glorify Jesus. Give H2O a call, 336-765-7870 to schedule a complimentary new patient consultation. Truthnetwork. Fire we want, for fire we It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get into the Line of Fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. And normally. Would be hearing the voice of the illustrious one, the brilliant 
Dr. Michael Brown, man of God, author, scholar, cultural crusader for Christ. He is recovering and getting a lot better, and we'll be back with you, Lord willing, soon, uh, hopefully Monday. But today is normally thoroughly Jewish Thursdays, which is always a blessing if you're a regular listener of the show. I am Stu Epperson. I'm honored to be sitting in the hot seat here at the Line of Fire, filling in for Dr. Brown. And we're talking about something that's been a huge enemy of the Jews. I, I can't even, I don't even want to think about how many Jews Stalin killed. We know Hitler, you know, killed a lot, you know, millions of Jews were murdered. But these, these regimes like communism, Marxism, very anti-Semitic, and they are very anti-American. And we're talking about how communism is invading the church today. Through the in the form of wokeism, in the form of being politically correct, in the form of all this CRT, which is just loaded with racism, and the gospel in many churches isn't being preached. It's it's being replaced. Uh, Ryan Heffelbeam, the gospel is being replaced by these communist agendas to get races to hate each other, and to get races mad at each other for things that happened centuries ago. Well, let's go back millennial. Let's go back, you know, to what the Egyptians owe the Jews for. 400 years of slavery, but but at the end of the day, only Christ can bring healing to generational sin that involves, yes, slavery, but involves a whole lot more than that, if you think about it. And you think about how you offended him, and think about the reparation Jesus Christ paid in my behalf on the cross. So as believers in the church, why Ryan Heffelbein with the Standing for Freedom Center, so good to have you with us today, why is the church giving in to these communist, Marxist, agendas right there where we're supposed to be hearing the word of God and the gospel and spreading the gospel. We're spreading all this nonsense. Yeah, I think, I think the mo- there's a great question. There's a motivation behind it that I think in many cases um, is genuine, I, 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 authentic. I think it, it's driven by this idea of some of compassion, but the reality is, is they don't understand uh, ultimately, the strategy behind this woke uh, movement. It's hijacking language and it's converting language to be used instrumental towards deconstruction. And so to be woke today is to be awakened to this reality of what they call systemic racism. And the word systemic is a critical theorist term. And it's it, it, to it's basically calling everything to racist, everything racist. Let me give you an example. Pete Buttigieg, right, who, uh, you know, former mayor uh, up in, uh, you know, uh, up in, uh, or rather, Indiana, sorry. And he uh, he's appointed and he's over transportation now in the Biden administration. He literally calls, uh, you know, traffic or, you know, traffic lines, uh, calls it racist. It's like, how, how is that possible? Well, in, in, in 2021 and 2022, the new reality and sort of this postmodern um, kind of leftist uh, taking over of society and culture, language and terminology has been totally misrepresented, hijacked, given, loaded with, with new terms that are Marxian in nature. Uh, when I say Marxian, I mean, you know, oppressor versus oppressed categories, right? right? Uh, that go all the way back to the Communist Manifesto, uh, but it's a cultural revolution. It's not economic socialism or economic um, communism. Rather, it is cultural. It's taking over education. It's taking over justice. The way we look at those things. Yeah. And uh, a man walked no into a man basis. walked into a medical clinic the other day. I was wa- watch. I watched the documentary on TV. He was wired with a camera. He said, "Will you treat me for COVID?" And the nurse said, no, sir, we won't. And he said, is it because I'm white? She says, it's because you are white. That's exactly right. We are allowing Mm -hmm. black people and other races in as a priority. And you're not you're not able to be treated. That's fact. That's not that is documented. Just folks go put your see, Brian, we've just taken our our thinking cap off. We just think, you know, in the church today, like we're just kind of like, well, if it's well, if it helps blacks and whites to get along, then let's buy into it. Well, not if it's driven by people that hate our country, that hate our God, and that, that honestly are racist themselves. 
I mean, here's what's exactly. fascinating to me. Am I wrong to say that the the people screaming out the loudest about race are the racists themselves? That's that's absolutely correct. And it's but it's heartbreaking because we have these churches that are supposed to be preaching the gospel, but they're doing all these racial reconciliation things, thinking that's going to fix the deep embedded pain that only the spirit, Holy Spirit of God can fix. And I'm not that's saying don't right. be dismissive, and I will full on apologize to anyone. You know, that if, if somehow I find out my ancestors did something to your ancestors, and I'll do everything I can right now. But the fact is, is this is causing major acrimony across the land in the church, and, and people are trying to figure out why are we looking for a racist behind every bush here. Yes, that's right. And so I, I, a brother in Christ I was having a conversation with, African-American, by the way, that's ethnicity. That's not race. We know from Scripture that we've all descended from Adam and Eve. We are one race and one blood. And Jesus Christ removes the dividing wall of hostility, as we see in Ephesians chapter 2, and the example of the uh, Gentile and Jewish divide. We are one body uh, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Racism is simply hatred towards my brother made mm. in the image of God. We yep. see that in Genesis chapter 4 when Cain killed his brother Abel. By the way, same dad, right? Uh, you know, same ethnicity. That's right. Uh, wow. That's the origin of racism today is the hatred towards my brother who is my neighbor. Wow. Um, but, but, but what you just said, I, I was talking to my brother in Christ, and I was just saying the other day, today the you know diversity, equity, inclusion, you hear that oftentimes. And what it is is it's a, it's a whistle among some of the woke left who, that the actual – uh, whether you know it's a- racism or anti-racism, the the goal of that is division, inequity, exclusion. It's actually to divide us. It's to it's to ensure that there are always going to be inequality along the lines of intersectionality. In the case of somebody who's going to seek medical treatment, guess what? A new medical apartheid do. You're, you're not going to be treated equally. There's no longer equal protection under the law. Mm. We want to create and resegregate society, and ultimately it's not inclusive. It's exclusive. If you don't go along to get along with this whole new Marxist notion of things, we are going to exclude you. We're going to cancel you. We're going to make you a second-class citizen in this country. We're going to take away your rights. By the way, Ontario, Canada, you can't vote if you're not vaccinated. Wow. So – it's, it's incredible. That is medical apartheid. And so this this is not just along the lines of racial. Um, it, it, it's gender. Uh, it, it's along the lines of medicine uh, with this whole vaccine, vaccine mandates that are going on uh, where people uh, – by the way, I'm not anti-vax. I want to be really clear. I'm not anti-mask. Um, you know, I'm not a COVID denier, but I believe in science. I don't believe in political science. Right. I believe in science. Yeah. And, and <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's happening right now. Yeah. And it is trying to keep us divided. And the church yeah. has got to wake up to be awake in Christ, not woke. Yeah, and I love what you're doing at Standing for Freedom Center. I want to make it very clear, uh, Ryan. And I want you to take us home. with your. With, I want to give you the final word on this segment here. This is the line of fire. I'm Stu Everson, guest hosting today for my good friend, Dr. Michael Brown, who will be back soon. Back on the air, he's recovering well. Grateful for all your prayers for him. He is a true warrior for Christ, and we're glad he's he's on the men's. Ryan Heffelbein is with me with a Standing for Freedom Center. Ryan, please talk about the most important thing. The main thing is to be the main thing. That the, Remind us of how we need to focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ, on preaching the word of God, on calling all men everywhere to repentance on reaching our world, 2.5 billion people on planet Earth who've never heard the gospel. As we wrap up this segment, Ryan, will you put in perspective that churches that, you know, I, you know, Standing for Freedom Center at Liberty University, you guys, are, you guys aren't just some, you know, politically charged right-wing movement to get everyone to vote for some certain party. You all really are standing on the freedom with which Christ has set us free, the freedom of John 832. You'll know the truth. The truth will set you free. So take us home by sharing with us yeah. the, that that key why Christ and His gospel is the quintessential solution to all of this. Will you please? Yes, absolutely, Stu. Thank you for teeing that up. I, I'm reminded of a, of a story when Carl F. H. Henry, the founding editor of Christianity Today, 
met with Carl Bart for the first time, and he, and he asked this question. He asked, he wanted to know, Carl Bart, leading theologian, neo, uh, neo-Orthodoxy, right, German theologian, all that, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Did Jesus Christ historically rose from the dead? That is the central key point mm. of all of human history is the empty tomb. That's it. That is wow. our hope, our living hope and promise as Christians. That matters. That's the central thing. And he said, who are you from? And he said, Christianity today. He goes, you mean Christianity yesterday? Carl Bar- or Carl, uh, sorry, Carl F.A. Tenry responded, no, Christianity yesterday, today, and forevermore. Wow. So uh, this is what the Standing for Freedom Center is about. And I'm so glad you mentioned about the politics part. We're more concerned about the why of life, liberty, tr- and truth than the what. There's a lot of other organizations out there. They do great jobs, you know, getting voter ID and all of this stuff and mobilizing people to vote. That's important. I do not want to take anything away from what they're doing. God bless them in that work. But we have to explain the why. We're losing the why. Yeah. That matters more than anything. The why, the gospel of Christ. Thank you for what you're doing. What's your website, Ryan? Standingforfreedom.com. Standingforfreedom.com. God bless you. We'll have you back on again. More coming up in the line of fire. What is your Jesus story? We're going to find that out. The most important story you can tell when we come back. The COVID shutdowns had at least one silver lining. More people are living on a budget these days. I am Rob West with another Money Wise Minute. As work hours shrank, folks needed a spending plan to stretch their dollars. A recent survey of 1,000 Americans found that 80% of them were using a budget. That's up from 68% three years ago before the pandemic hit a pretty significant increase. What isn't so surprising is that 90% of those in the latest survey who are using a budget said it helped them get or stay out of debt. If you're in the 20% still not living on a budget, download the MoneyWise app or connect with one of our coaches at moneywise.org for help. More people are budgeting these days. Make sure you're one of them. The Money Wise Minute is sponsored by David Belk of Carolina Financial Advisors in Greensboro. For a complimentary consultation, contact him at moneywise.org slash David Belk. You know, if you feel like you're stuck with a health care plan that isn't affordable or you simply don't like it, right now is a great time to switch to MediShare. The typical family saves $500 a month when they join MediShare, and what's more, they like it. MediShare has double the customer satisfaction rate compared to the typical health insurance plan. That's double. So you get a massive network of providers to choose from. You get telehealth services. And MediShare is the most trusted name in healthcare sharing. It's been around for more than 25 years, shared more than $4 billion in healthcare bills. Here's why now really is the time to make the switch, too. You can start saving each month, which is huge. But right now, they'll waive your joining fee. You'll save another $170 right off the bat. But again, it's a limited time offer. you got to call now. And it only takes two minutes to find out how much you'd save by switching. Here's the number, 855-SHARE-40. That's 855-SHARE-40. 855-SHARE-40. In our modern culture, it's easy to find yourself thinking like the world, but this is not what Christ calls us to do. Dr. Chris Hughes cuts through the fog of our culture and news cycle with truth and compassion, pointing you to God's Word and a Christian perspective. I will never be ashamed to be an American. We don't have to be ashamed to love a country that was founded on biblical principles. The Christian Perspective with Chris Hughes, Saturday afternoons at 3 on The Truth Triad. In 2004, Diversified Fence Builders opened their doors. Owner John Folsom and his team wanted to provide the triad and beyond with the best variety of affordable fencing for home, church, and business. Aluminum, chain link, vinyl, or wood. Diversified Fence Builders has it. Try the new Diversified Fence Builders Fence Estimator at DiversifiedFence.com. Good fences make good neighbors. Financing is available. Trusted for nearly 20 years. Diversified Fence Builders. The truth. Oh God of burning, cleansing flame, send the fire. It's the line of fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. that brings 
in thoroughly Jewish Thursdays each week on the Line of Fire with Dr. Michael Brown. I'm Stu Epperson in for Dr. Brown. It's an honor to be with you today, sitting in the hot seat here in the Line of Fire studios, and we're excited to talk about your Jesus story. And as we kind of painted a bleak picture there in the first segment of of the the attacks from without, the attacks from within the church, how the church is buying into a lot of this racist propaganda, which is absolutely tragic. The church has been buying in to a lot of the CRT stuff and whatnot and, and gotten distracted. You know, how we can't get our eye off the gospel. We can't get our eye off the target of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you about a man of God who's passionate about that, who spends every waking moment with his, in his ministry, the ministry of truelife.org, talking about how to share your Jesus story. And he is Jesse Connors. Jesse, it's great to have you on the line of fire, man. You're going to tell us about sharing our Jesus story today. What's This is what's really important right here, huh? It really, really is. And after listening to the previous segment, I was just digging through some quotes on evangelism. I thought this would be a great bridge for our segment. And it's from Leonard Ravenhill. Leonard was a incredible evangelist during the Second World War. He would tour around and give uh, evangelistic messages to people, and they responded, and many became uh, Christians and also gave their life in submission. But this is what he is, is quoted to have said. Are you ready for this? Yes. America is not dying because of the strength of humanism, but the weakness of evangelism. Mm. Wow. That is strong. That is strong. T- and talk, I yeah. will yeah. yeah, I will tell you that in the midst of where we're at right now, with this cultural calamity as we're seeing the moral fabric of our country destroyed, we have to say with a humble heart that the church has not done its job. And we know that that's the case because if you look at LifeWay, this is before COVID, LifeWay had a stat out that only 2% share their faith on a regular basis. How in the world could that happen when Jesus was so, so authoritative when he told us to, us to go? And he talked about how beautiful the feet are of those that bring good news. He, he told us to go when, when he was ascending into heaven to go there for and make disciples. And uh, I, I don't know why people thought that the work of an evangelist was only for a particular person like me. I'm an evangelist. But the work of evangelism is for everybody. The work of evangelism is for everybody. The evangelist is what equips people to do evangelism. I love it. And that is what we have done yep. with, with our uh, wonderful ministry, with TrueLife.org, where you're able to share your Jesus story. And I also have written Evangelism Boot Camp. You can go to evangelismbootcamp.org. We'll talk about that, I hope, a little bit more. I want to hear about that but, book. Everyone needs to get a copy yep. of this book. Can you tell us, Jesse, your Jesus story, how you got into this, and then we're going to challenge listeners, maybe even call in and tell us their Jesus story. Go ahead. Uh, so let's start sure. off with the, the founder of this awesome ministry. How did you even come to know the Lord, and how did you come into to starting this, this wonderful ministry, helping others share their Jesus story? Well, I was very blessed to grow up in a Christian home, and my parents were not blessed. And they're actually listening right now, so hi, Mom and Dad. My father, uh, one of his first memories was uh, his mom on the floor uh, bleeding uh, because his father had beaten her. And he came back from World War II, actually, uh, and uh, was very – He there's a long story to why that happened, but, but – uh, my dad had a really rough childhood. My, my mom, not as bad, but still not in a Christian home. But one day, somebody walked up to my dad on a pier and gave him a This Is Your Life Now track. This is while he was in, uh, he was in, from California. Now he's over in, uh, serving in the Navy, and someone randomly hands him a track. He opens it up, and he's by himself. He gets on his knees, and he accepts Jesus. And then he goes and tells his – he knocks on hundreds and hundreds of doors over the next couple of weeks, just telling people about Jesus and how he had a life change and how they can have a life change too. And so that's really how truelife.org was born in many respects. It's a product of my, my dad's testimony 
we have all free video answers to life's hard questions. Now, I know that uh, we're on the, the Jewish side of the broadcast here. It's Thursday. And if you go to truelife.org, there's a special Judaism section with former uh, believers in Judaism that are now mis uh, Messianic Jews that believe that Messiah is Jesus, and they, their stories are there. And then we have, if, you're, if they're Mormons, atheists, Jehovah Witnesses, Buddhists, Muslims, whatever they are, there's former believers in that faith waiting for people to talk to them uh, or to, to actually look at the videos so they can hear people like them speak to them uh, because we know that a former atheist is more likely to convert another atheist and a Mormon is more likely to convert uh, a former Mormon is likely to convert another Mormon. So where we're at right now with, with the Share Your Jesus story is we have combined our website with the opportunities for you to share your Jesus story. And so on truelife.org, you're able to have your Jesus story sit on top of all of those wonderful videos. So it won't be just you sharing your story, your Jesus story, your testimony, etc. It'll be those that are below you also helping others to come to know Christ. Now, when you do that, there's a link that you can put on your social media. There's a link that the same link can be put in an email. The same link can be put in a text message, and you'll be able to copy and paste this, and thousands of people can see it, and it's free. So we encourage wow. everyone to go to truelife.org and go to share your Jesus story. Now, our church network doesn't even really know about this yet. We have churches across the country that partner with us. Uh, we make invitation cards for them to hand out because uh, people are afraid to share their faith. So we combine our website in the back of their invitation card so that people will be more likely to share their faith. So you're mobilizing but, uh, people to share the gospel. You're mobilizing pastors. A pastor sitting in front of a congregation of two or 300 people, 400, 500, whatever. Right. You're, statistically, 90% of those people sitting out in front of that pastor are not sharing the gospel actively. More than that. And I think, uh, like, okay, there's, this is a twofold reason, okay? Number one, that they can go to church their entire life and not know how we got the Bible. There's okay. a failure in Christian education. Okay. Forty authors, most have never met over a period of 1,600 years. It still tells the same story. It matches archaeological data perfectly. I mean, National Geographic um, has been really bad on a lot of things, but as far as the documenting the authenticity of Scripture and the authority of Scripture, it's been doing a great job of archaeological evidence. So we've been seeing... We've been seeing a lack of education, and then people think that other religions might have, uh, might have competition for us. When in reality, if you look at what we have, <laughs> all other religions, all other worldviews, they break down at the archaeological level and many other levels when they're being compared to Christianity. Christianity is a no-brainer, but right. unfortunately we haven't been telling people that in our churches. We've been going verse by verse you know, through the Bible, not talking about how we got the Bible. So True Life Org has a Bible section on it for free, too, so people can tune in and uh, listen and learn for themselves. But also, whenever they recommend truelife.org to somebody, it also uh, is carrying that same information to the unbelievers. And even their Christian friends, of course, will benefit from it, too. How, how about let's do this. If someone calls in and shares their Jesus story, it can be in 30 seconds, it can be longer, we want to send you an amazing book, The Evangelism Boot Camp that is written that by is my nice. friend, Jesse Connors. He's on the air with us right yep. now. It's an awesome book. I read it. He gave a signed copy to me and my daughters when we were up in Lynchburg having dinner. It was unbelievable, and it's a powerful book, mobilizing, teaching you everything you know, putting on that armor. Jesse, you're going to take us through that book when we come back from this next break, but I want to give the phone number. If you want to call in and share your Jesus story, the first person to do this today is going to get a free copy of this book. We'll drop it in the mail to you. From my friend Jace Jesse, who's helping people, Christians across the world, share their Jesus story. The toll free number is 866 34 Truth. 866 348 7884. Share your Jesus story. Get a free book. It's an amazing book. It's a workbook, so you actually get involved with it. Churches are doing it in a small group form. It's got some sensational, uh, big time endorsements to this book. Jesse, why did you write the book? And I want to get into that more on the other side of this break. We've just got about a minute. Tell us real quick why you wrote the Evangelism Boot Camp. Sure. Absolutely. Well, Josh McDowell said it really good on his forward. He said, you will learn how to share the gospel and what to say when you have five seconds, 
five minutes or an hour. Mm. He prepares you for the most probable worldviews that you will encounter, like Mormonism and Islam. You will go on training missions, and you will become who God created you to be, a soldier in his army that regularly shares their faith with others, a soldier who has been trained to battle through doubt and fear, to get to the front lines, to share the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. That is Josh McDowell's words to you, my friends. If you're listening, my brothers and sisters across this country right now, evangelismbootcamp.org, evangelismbootcamp.org. Those books, this is a 130-page book. It's an incredible resource. Jonathan Falwell recently just told me, who would want this on their shelf? This is a great resource. It's only $5. We don't get a single dime if you go to true, uh, sorry, if you go to evangelismbootcamp.org, they're five dollars from Amazon. If you have a Prime account, it's free shipping. This is a no-brainer for you. Okay, this book, guys, it's a must-read, and it's a book that. What I love about the book is it actually it actually encourages you to put to to put like like James, the book of James, we talk about is the shoe leather book. You know, putting your faith in action. What a what. Can you think of a better way, even even hailing back to that quote that Jesse from Ravenhill that you started this segment with, to right. put your faith in action, to do something, to make a difference, to solve? How many things are solved by people coming to know Christ? Everything. Can I say that quote? Can I say that quote one more time? Please do. America is not dying because of the strength of humanism, but the weakness of evangelism. That is something. Leonard Ravenhill Jesse Connors is our guest. He is with a ministry called True Life, truelife.org. He also has launched a whole new initiative called Share Your Jesus Story. And he's going to tell you when we come back, very basically, he's going to, he's going to take, he said, we're going to go to, we're, folks, we're doing boot camp. The final part of this show, when we come back for this quick break on the line of fire, is we're going to go into an intense boot camp. So get ready, get stretched. Get hydrated and stay tuned. Don't touch that dial more of the line of fire coming up right after this quick break. Hang on. 866-34-TRUTH if you want to call in with your Jesus story. Mismanaged anger is one of our greatest social problems. It is also one of the most destructive problems in marriage. Dr. Gary Chapman with a Love Language Minute. In all cultures, people experience anger. Why is anger so pervasive? I want to suggest that the answer lies in the reality that we are made in the image of God, and God experiences anger. God's anger is based on His holiness and His love. His holiness means that He is righteous in all His thoughts and deeds. His love means that He cares about the well-being of His creatures. When His creatures violate what He knows to be right, God experiences anger which motivates him to take constructive action. I believe our experience of anger is very similar. Dr. Gary Chapman is the author of The Five Love Languages. For more, visit fivelovelanguages.com. Hi, I'm John Woodard. Woodard & Company Asset Management Group has served businesses and retirement plans in the triad since 1985. We can design, implement, and facilitate all aspects of the 401k plan for your business. As a registered investment advisor and fiduciary, we are able to provide investment assistance to your plan compliant under the ERISA 404c law. Located just west of Winston-Salem and Bermuda Run, please call us at 336-998-7000 to see how we may assist you. And please remember to always buy quality and diversify. Hi, I'm Tom Booth from Bible for Breakfast. Well, all of our entries from last month's Ministry of the Month are right here. Now it's time to find out who is the grand prize winner. Mixing them all up, good luck, everyone. Congratulations to Vicki Brown. Vicki listens to The Truth You Talk. Every month we highlight one of our wonderful truth partners in ministries. Remember, it's not whether you win or lose, but thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Truth Network. It's The Line of Fire with your host, activist, author, international speaker, and theologian, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Get into The Line of Fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. You may 
to have a, an earned degree. You may be a high school dropout. You may not have a sensational testimony filled with biker gang stories and drug dealers and prison and all that. And by the way, I love hearing testimonies from all kinds of people. God has given everyone a story. But if you know Jesus, you have a Jesus story. And today we're going to bring that out of you. Now, if you know your Jesus story and you have one and you want to share it with the world, you can call in right now. It's a toll-free call. We're even going to give you a book. And, you know, don't do it for the book, but do do it for the book because the book's going to be a blessing to you. It's the Evangelism Boot Camp by Jesse Connors, who is on the air with us right now. This guy is an author. We have him on the air with us right now. All you got to do is call the number 866-34-TRUTH. I'll spell it out, 866-348-7884. Call in, tell us your Jesus story. To share with us how to tell a Jesus story, we have Jesse on the line. He's written this book for this purpose to equip pastors, people in the pews, everyone, believers, to tell the good news. Tell me the story of Jesus. Tell me your story, your Jesus story. Jesse Connors, so good to have you with us. We are going to yeah. get into boot camp. Now, you got to get us fired up here. I mean, I read your I read all your right. book, and I opened to the very first page, and you said, all right, folks, get ready to grab your armor. It's a battle. This is a That's war, right. right? That's right. So talk right, to I mean, us. T- a, take us from ground I mean, zero. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Sorry. I'm going to give you a few nuggets really fast. I'm talking over you. It's kind of like my boot camp soldier man coming in. Yes. But I want to tell you right now that Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 is where we're talking about our spiritual armor. And did you know that in the, in the verses that precede the listing of our spiritual armor, it says that we must be ready to stand firm. It, it says stand firm twice. And then it lists your armor, you know, the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt buckle of truth, sword of the spirit. And, of course, the shield of faith, and then it goes into the gospel of peace, which are the shoes. And then at the end of this, like I'm talking, like 19 and 20 in Ephesians 6, 19 and 20, is saying to stand, uh, to speak boldly. So the first part is saying to stand firm. The second part is saying to speak boldly. And so it's, it's really talking about your shoes and how important they are because you have to ask yourself, how effective is a shoeless soldier? Wow. How effective is a shoeless soldier? Are you really going to want to go to battle without having your shoes on? Mm. That is something. So the gospel. Is- and, and, you know, it says, and doesn't say in Romans 10, how lovely on the mountain are the feet of them that bring good yes. news. You have beautiful feet if you're sharing the gospel, if your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's wow. right. Romans ten fifteen says, and how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That Unbelievable. Is why the scripture says, how beautiful are the, let me make sure I have it. That's exactly it. right. How, Romans. How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news? Yeah. And again, we, in Proverbs eleven thirty, he was wise when souls. If you guys are wanting to talk about why we're losing the battle in America today, it's because we are not sharing our faith. It's because we're afraid. It's because we haven't been trained. That's okay. It's not too late. We can stand together and make this happen. Let me go into detail. Very okay, now, quickly. Jesse, before you do, we have a caller in sure. who wants your book, okay. who's got a salvation story on the line right now. Larry is calling in. we got to talk to him. Unbelievable. Larry. It, it's just happening in real time. And by the way, Toward the end of the show, Jesse's going to talk to us about a path for revival that's going to blow your mind. It's right out of the good book. Hold on. Let's get Larry on the line. Uh, Larry, are you there, sir? Welcome to the line of fire. Stu Epperson with you, filling in for my good friend, Dr. Michael Brown. Jesse Connors, the author of Evangelism Boot Camp, is on the air, and you just won a book. Great. Thank you. That is, We're so glad you called it. Tell us your Jesus story, Larry. It's so good to hear from you. Okay, um, this was close to 50 years ago. I, uh, I was separated from my wife, living with another woman now, and a knock came on the door at her apartment. I opened the door, and there was this man there telling me about his church. And my, my heart just, you know, put up a block, and I said, oh, how much does your church need? You need some money? So I pulled my wallet out to look for, uh, like, a, maybe a $5 bill. And he looked at me, and he said, you know, salvation's free. I don't want your money. And I, and he said, thank you very much for your time. And I closed the door and I thought, oh my gosh, what was that about? 
a little bit later, I was in a mall, sat down, had an ice cream cone. Right beside me was this chick track. I picked it up mm. and started reading it. Talked about salvation. Mm. I thought, hmm, put that down. Out on my car one day, a little bit, a couple months later, was something stuck to my windshield. Talked about salvation. Mm. I thought, somebody's trying to tell me something. So I mm. found a Bible, a little uh, wedding Bible in the apartment. And I started reading it, and it convicted me that I was a sinner. And right there in the apartment, I dropped down on my knees and uh, I accepted the Lord and um, finally had to move out of the apartment with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And eventually, to make a long story short, my wife and I got back together, and uh, she received the Lord, and uh, our marriage was saved. And I've been walking Amen. with the Lord ever since. Beauty from ashes. Wow. Beauty that is so Jesse, what what is it what does it do in your soul to hear Larry share about how Larry. he came to know Christ? Somebody got it, somebody banged on his door. Someone put gas in the car, yep. drove to his neighborhood, someone That's took right. the time to, to to take a shower, brush their hair, and, 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 and go and canvas and go go share the gospel. Someone left a gospel track, a chick track yeah, of all I, tracks. Can I highlight this? This is so important for us to discuss, okay? So, Larry, I love you, brother. Thank you for sharing that with us, and I hope you stay on the line with us. So, sure. so yes. basically, here we are, Larry. The guy knocks on your door, and he is the recipient of your closed door. He saw you close the door in his face. He probably doesn't even know that you became a Christian. He probably doesn't even know that you played that he played a role in your life that that was that significant that it was really foundational to get the momentum going. I cannot I cannot thank that man enough for knocking on your door and taking that scorn, that shame, and that well, God, it's in your hands type of approach, and still going mm. because that's the work of an evangelist. Do you want to add on that? I just, I'm just so encouraged. And I'm just, I'm so encouraged that, you know, everyone, here's the wild thing. Larry included Jesse, Stu, our awesome producers in there of the line of fire. Everyone who has a Jesus story has a Jesus story because someone else had a Jesus story. That's right. Think about that. And so we hear the Reverend Billy Graham. We hear Ravenhill, who you quoted. We hear about D.L. Moody and the millions who have been impacted by him and C.T. Studd and Jim Elliott and all these godly people. Well, go find out who led them to Christ. Ask yourself this question. Who brought you to Jesus so that you're able now to share with a nationwide and international audience on this radio show the good news of Christ? Larry, your story has gone out to hundreds of thousands of people. Because someone shared their Jesus story with you. And I'm so encouraged. Larry, we're going to put you on hold so we can get your details, your address, so we can drop a copy of this uh, this book. You're going to love it. From Jesse, we're going to get the author to sign it himself. And, Larry, God bless you. Thanks for calling in today and for sharing Larry, your story. Larry, I love you, brother. Larry, I love you, brother. Thank you. God bless you. Thank and God bless the man that knocked on your door. And God bless the person hey, that gave amen. you that sick track. That is so and cool. May, may God bless them. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you know, it's fun to do a spiritual genealogy uh, at some point in your life, Jesse, where you go back, okay, who led them to the Lord? Who led them to the Lord? I was with a buddy yeah. who I had helped lead to the Lord, and we were seeing a man who helped lead me, lead me to the Lord, who was a pastor. We were driving through Asheville. We stopped at the guy's church. I gave him a good hug, and you know what my buddy said to him, Jesse? My buddy what said, he said, he said, oh, he said, Grandpa. Grandpa, it's good oh, to see you. And I said, Grandpa, why are you calling? Why are you calling Mike Grandpa? Why are you calling him Grandpa? Because he led you to the Lord. You led me to the Lord. So he's my spiritual grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, we're almost out of time. Talk about how what you're. How, this is, folks. Right. This is the God's golden secret of revival, yep. right there in the good book. Talk about yep. something that will change okay. our culture, our world. Right. Jesse, lay it on us about how revival is going to come out of this. All right, everybody that's listening, stop what you're doing right now. I want you to think about how we will get a revival going across this country. It's very important. Okay, Larry's story that you just heard was probably 30 seconds. When you go to truelife.org, there is a share your Jesus story button. When you click on the Share Your Jesus Story button, you put in your information. It's all free. 
and then he can simply take what he said and put it on on our system and you can do this on your on your phone record it on your phone and then you can upload it from your phone and then you can place it on top of the truelife.org website and again if you recall from the previous segment there's lots of people and answers like Ken Ham, Josh McDowell, Jonathan Falwell, many others are below us answering questions. So it's not just you trying to share your faith. You can have a 30-second testimony or a 10-minute testimony. It's up to you. So listen, the key element here is at the end of every single Jesus story, you're going to be saying you can share your Jesus story like I have. Click the Share Your Jesus mm. Story button right above me. So the video is placed below to share your Jesus story button. I love it. So, Give the website one more time, Jesse. We're out of time. TrueLife.org. 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 Share your Jesus story there. Click on the link. You can do it, and you'll be a blessing to many, many people. That's the challenge. Hey, Jesse, what a blessing. Thank you for being on. Get the book, Evangelism Boot Camp, by my friend. This is AM830, WTRU Kernersville.